This tutorial is about writing an APA style. APA stands for American Psychological Association, which created and published the APA Style Manual. But APA style is so flexible that it's popular with many disciplines that have nothing to do with psychology. As of the making of this video, the 7th edition is the latest official APA Style Manual. We have a copy of the book available at the library. You can also find some free short guides online at the APA official website or the popular Owl at Purdue webpages. Starting with the 7th edition, APA Style now has two general versions, one for students and one for professionals. This tutorial is about the student type. Here's an example essay that's not in any particular format. Let's fix it up so that it's an APA format. Firstly, I'll change the margins to be one inch on each side. Notice that there's a lot of space between each of these paragraphs. And even if I use the backspace key to move it back, I can't get rid of that little space in between each one. That's because in Microsoft Word, by default, it's set to put a little line at the end of every paragraph. And the only way to get rid of that is to go into the paragraph settings here and say that you don't want any space after each paragraph. And so even though that's set as the default in Word, uh, that's not the way it's supposed to be for APA format. And in fact, most um, style manuals don't use that kind of space. So I don't know why Word put it in there, but we can just get rid of it easily by putting a zero in this line. And while we're here, we're also going to make this a double spaced paper because most of everything that you do in APA is going to be double spaced. So we'll go ahead and let that go through. And that looks a bit better. So now we can finish up getting rid of those extra lines that we don't want. However, our font is still not appropriate for a paper of this type. APA style recommends specific fonts at specific sizes, like 12 point Times New Roman, 11 point Georgia, 11 point Calibri, and so on. So for this essay, I'm going to go with the old classic Times New Roman size 12. Now we need to start a new page for our title page. So I'll insert a page break here. So this is now on its own page. The content of your title page should start a few lines down from the top margin. There should also be an extra space between your title and the rest of the information on the page. Plus the title should be in bold. Then everything needs to be centered. The content of your title page should include the paper's title, the author name, meaning you, your affiliation, meaning the school that you're in and maybe the department, the course that you're taking, your instructor, and the due date of the project. We can also start our page numbers from this first page. So we can insert those at the top of the page and go with a plain number right aligned at the top of the page. Notice also that it's gone to the default font settings. So we need to change that to whatever font we chose for the paper, which is in this case, Times New Roman 12. Then let's copy the title so that we can paste it at the first page of the body content and remove any extra spaces after it. There shouldn't be any separation between here and here. And this should still be bold and centered. Now we need to put a half inch indent at the start of each paragraph. So I'll select all of my paragraphs and then use the ruler to put that in. Or at least in my opinion, that's the easiest way to do it. So we can enable the ruler by clicking it there and we grab this top tab here and pull that to the half inch mark and now all of my half inch indents have been placed inside without me having to uh, press the tab button at the start of each and every one. That is for some people an easier way to do it but this is much more um, efficient. Now this essay is in APA format however it doesn't contain any cited sources. Let's look at a more complex paper that does have those. 
This is a sample paper from the APA, which includes examples of many different kinds of citations. The yellow highlighting here is only to make the items stand out, and there should be no yellow highlighting in your final paper. Parenthetical citation here is one of the most common ways of being able to cite an author in your work. Here you take the last name of the author, then add a comma, a space, and the year in parentheses, and that goes just before the final period of your sentence with no extra space. You would also do this if you have more than one author. Or in this case here, you might have a group author. If you are quoting from your source, you will also need to provide a page number if one is available. Besides parentheses, you can also credit an author by mentioning their name inside the sentence that you've written. There are different options for citing resources in your paper, so that gives you some wiggle room in terms of how you want to present your voice or your argument. Sample papers and demonstrations like this are extremely useful, and you can find them in style manuals and style guides. That way, you can get an example of what your format is supposed to look like, and then match your citations to look the same. If you used any research resources while writing your paper, those should go on the references page at the end in alphabetical order. Notice that it's still double spaced, except this time the index goes on the lines after the first one. To achieve this hanging indent effect, select your works cited page and again go up to your ruler, but this time Grab this little pyramid here and pull that to the half inch mark and that will change the indent for things below the first line automatically. There are established rules for citing different kinds of materials, including media, such as YouTube. So don't think that you can't use an item simply because it might be too difficult to cite. Fortunately, many of the subscription library databases we have come with a citation feature of some sort that will at least help you get started with making your citation. Some of them even have export files that can be read by bibliographic management software, but whether or not you want to use a program like that is up to you. If you need any more help finding resources for your APA paper or citing them properly, please do contact us at the library for help. We have a library guide for research help under our main menu under research and then research help. We have a page about citing resources that includes many of the links I've mentioned in this video. And always feel free to contact us. You can get our contact information on the library's contact page or contact us right away using the email form on the home page or the chat box on the home page. I'll also place links to the resources used in this video in the description. Thanks for listening and good luck on your writing.